What's going on everyone? Metal Raymond here and welcome back to another Runex guide. It has been a little while since the last time we made one of these. Today we're going to be covering the brand new Hunlef boss. We're going to explain how it works, what it does, go over the loot table, what you need to bring and all of that stuff. As you can see we've already grinded it quite a little bit to say the least and uh, looking mighty fine with our black crystal gear. I like that it's like slightly translucent. No, don't think so actually. Well, it looks good regardless. But, um, yeah, I want to go uh, go ahead and go over how it's done and all of that good stuff. So, it's going to be a bit of a quicker guide, so we're just going to walk you all through it and all of that stuff, and then we'll explain how it works. So, yeah, before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, head into the giveaway for this video. We're going to be doing a $100 bond giveaway. If you want to enter that, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment your in-game name down below, and turn on the post notifications. If you've done all that, you enter the giveaway. We show the best of luck on that. Um, if you're new to Runex, there's a link in the description at the very top if you want to try it out for yourself. Uh, the update coverage will be in a separate video. I don't know if that one will be up before this one or after, but probably before. But uh, you can watch a bit of more Hunt Left Killing in that on top of it. So yeah, let's go start off at the very start. Alright, starting with the basic how to get there. You go to Boss Teleports, go to the second tab and it will be right there at the bottom. Crystalline Wolf of Saren. This is a solo instance battle that requires 500 mil deposit to fight. Coins are returned upon a successful kill of the boss. If you end up leaving the area or dying to the boss, you will lose that 500 mil and you will have to pay to go in and try again. This is the area, it's nothing too overly complicated, you don't need any unlocks as far as I'm aware, but it might actually have like maybe like an achievement requirement or something, and I don't think it does to be honest, I think anyone can, uh, can go ahead and do it. Alright, so, you have a little banker over here, nurse over here, and then over here the magic gate to start the fight. Now, what is most important here? The gear. There are going to be quite a different amount of setups that you can use. Generally speaking, if you're first starting off and you don't have any of the crystal items, your best in slot is going to be full crest root and then something like this. Something similar to what I'm wearing here. But I do want to go ahead and go over a wide variety of options that you could bring. All right, I managed to grab a variety of options that I want to go ahead and go over. So. Like I mentioned, the best in slot is what we currently have on. Now, there's a lot that can be adjusted, obviously. Um, most people won't have a ranging trim, for example. You can use a Zealot's Eye, that works absolutely fine. There is a, a bunch of varieties, that's why I brought out, you know, a bunch of stuff. There's this new Saren Halo that will give 5% damage and accuracy for every crystal or for every Saren item equipped, to be specific. So that should include things like the crystal ring and it of course works with crystal gear but a little bit more iffy um not too much to say about that but like it would be an option i just think uh, something like crest root is too strong so it would have to be if you have maybe dark root that could be a decent combination dark root top and bottom if you're using a crossbow with this halo and then using a crystal ring I don't think there's a lot of other alternatives. There are no boots or glove slots that work with the Halo as far as I know. I don't think there's any crystal boots or gloves. Uh, you could boost it with something like if you have a bow of fair dinner with the blessing, this should count as four items. The Halo itself, the bow, this and this, or 20% accuracy and damage. That's still pretty decent. Uh, the full crystal set, however, gives 30% on its own. So this is already a 30% per, or like 10% per piece and then you get an additional 20%. So the full set will give you 50% and you get another 25% from the blessing right there. But in this case, I would recommend using uh, a grand ring, of course, but if you don't have that, crystal ring is absolutely fine. This thing has eight ranged strength, really, really good. Alternatively, you could go with the brimstone ring eye. It has the same amount of ranged strength. Um, so that's pretty good as well, but this one has slightly higher ranged accuracy. Although at, at this point you wouldn't need it. Alternatively, if you're starting off very, very poor, e carols is always a great option. Don't use regular, but I didn't want to, I couldn't find a crossbow. But <laughs> Elite carols is, of course, always a safe option. In terms of gloves, uh, Chasm Quaker Gauntlets are a very good one for learning because it will reduce your damage by half at a 3 out of 4 rate uh, when you're below half HP. So it could definitely have those moments where it saves your life to have this. But once again, I also understand not everybody can afford the gloves. 
In that case, just get good. You're gonna practice until you get it, you know, that's just what it is. Um, alternatively for galvanic boots, I prefer these if you have a good strong special attack weapon, such as of course the uh, Chasm Quaker bow right there, because the Chasm Quaker bow is just very strong and I would like to get that 5% more special attack from these boots. But they are not the best in terms of stats. So alternatively, of course, Executioner or Default Boots both kind of work, but Defaults are better that they actually have ranged strength. However, a lot of people don't keep a spare uh, Default Boots around once they make Executioner nowadays, and it still has the Default effect, so it gets the job done. But if you want pure ranged strength, Boots of Brimstone is an option for 5 of it, or you could even go with Superior Leather, or Superior Hydra Boots. I do believe that's the item name. Uh, which can be made with Superior Hydra letters from the Superior Hydra kills. Uh, I think that one gives probably one or two more ranged strength bonus. Xerite Fan Braces is also one ranged strength lower than the Superior Hydra letter Fan Braces. If you want to invest in that, be my guest. Those are some options. But Chasm Quake Gauntlets are definitely great for learning. Speaking of learning, another alternative option for the Blessing, uh, if you're not using something that consumes arrows, of course, would be the Fortitude Blessing. Um, this item gives a 20% damage reduction whenever you have it equipped. And here we have another beautiful setup uh, that I put on on the side so I can show this off as well. This will get the job done because the Halo and the Ring are both gonna increase your accuracy and damage for each God item equipped. In this scenario, I got Zemi, Dehyde, top and bottom, so that is gonna give me 4% uh, on the Halo, as well as 2.5%, uh, I guess? 2.5% uh, accuracy and damage with this one. I should. I, I think the Halo should work for the ring, actually. Uh, and then I'm using Executioner Boots, but Zamorak Boots would work as well. This counts as a Ceridomain item, so it still boosts an additional 2% on the Blessing. Uh, ring it wouldn't work on, so I guess the Halo would have to be the third item, or you want to equip a different Zemi item somewhere. Sadly, the Fan Braces do not work with the ring for some reason, those don't count as the God item. It tested it on the dummy and it doesn't increase the max hit. Matter of fact, it goes down. So, that is interesting. Armaments Blessing, obviously one of the best options if you're in a setup like this, because it boosts all the other stats, look at that. That's a quite a range of strength difference, I mean 8, it's nice. There are cheaper options out there for sure uh, at this level. I think the Chaos Blessing should provide ranged strength. So that could be an alternative option as well. Yeah, 5 ranged strength on that. Um, and of course, like I said, I got my F keys wrong. Like I said, the Fortitude Blessing, 20% damage reduction. So it will help quite a bit. And then there's one more thing that I've seen a lot of people use, which is the Zarite Crossbow. Combined with, of course, Xenite Bolts E for the most damage, with the Xerite Van Braces and a Divine Spirit Shield, preferably the intrinsic kind, because that uh, will give you the highest kind of boost right there. Ranging Trimmed is also just like with the Brimstone Boots, uh, this is best in slot. 1 in 15 of your total ranged strength will be added by the Amulet, and the Amulet has 15 ranged strength, so. 113 without, you would think it goes up by 15, but it goes up by a little bit more than that. So yeah, that is also definitely an option if you want to consider doing that. Uh, like I said, I like Galvanic Boots, that's the one I camp. Uh, Elite Completionist Cape would be a better option, but I'm, I haven't gotten it back yet, so <laughs> that's why I'm not using that. I think that more or less should cover what your options are in terms of gear. Uh, this is my current setup that I found to work the best. I use the Crest Root with a Chasm Bow, and now of course after obtaining Full Crystal I use that with a regular Bofa. The upgraded version is gonna take quite some grinding to finally obtain. Uh, you get it right in here in the chest and it requires 3 Tormented Crystal Sigils from the superior version that you have to kill. And it drops at 1 in 50 and the crystals are a pain to get, so it's gonna be a bit of a grind to get that eventually. We'll get there. Um, so yeah, that is also an option. I haven't tested out the Blade of Seldor yet, because we don't own one of those either. Anyway, uh, just in terms of equipment, there's a lot of possible adjustments. If you want to try and do Unleft using Crestorva with a Sanguine SD Scythe or a Cerberite Heli and Executioner, I'm pretty sure you'll get reasonable kills. We might even do a melee kill in a little bit, just to see how that compares. Um, the options are there, so feel free to pick and choose depending on what I've shown and try and figure it out from there. 
More importantly, let's go ahead and hop into the boss and go into the mechanics, how to actually kill him, what to watch out for and all of that. Alright, so I decided to record a full kill and we're just gonna break it down a little bit as um, I'm speaking and we'll play in the background and this way we can do a bit more like pausing in between for explanations and such. Uh, I did end up realizing I didn't even cover the inventory up until now. You want to have some food, you want to have some brews, uh, something to pot up with, whether that be pot, actual potions or something like Cape of, the Cape of Myth's Eye that I'm using to pot up. I'll also be doing this kill just using the Chasm Quake bow, because I figured, you know, if you're new to Hunt Left, you might not have <coughs> full crystal yet, so that is absolutely fine. I always start off the kill with a Dragon or Draconic Warhammer to lower the defense a little bit, I bring runes for vengeance because his hits are pretty fucking high when you miss a prayer, so being able to reflect some of that can help speed up the kill quite a bit. Uh, and then also being able to use epic lux is important here, and then like a pet for drop rate bonus, cape for drop rate bonus, and the necklaces for drop rate bonus. Do with that what you will, you may adjust it a bit, maybe you don't want to bring a vengeance, you want to bring a bit more food until you learn it fully, those are all very very optional. Uh, just do it how you want to do, I'm just here to give you the guidelines on how to get into it, right? Hunlev is a boss that has two phases. Phase 1 will start off with just how you enter the room in the blue form. Uh, in this form it will also have a 66% chance to do melee attacks. Most of his attacks are going to be melee. And then you have a mage, range and tornado attack that will cover it just a little bit. So. At 1000 HP it's gonna go ahead and transfer into an enrage phase and then the melee spamming will stop and it will start doing a bigger variety of different attacks. Now there was a range attack uh, already right there but we'll get back to it in just a second again. Um, yeah, all together just not the most difficult boss, you just wanna camp melee prey and it's very important that when he uses other attacks that you go back to melee prey afterwards. So what are the other attacks? Well, first off, we have a magic attack that looks like this. A blue circle on the floor, that's how you know it's going to be charging up. If you see that thing start to appear, pray mage and then go back to melee prey. And there's the ranged attack right after. Electricity will form around him, he will lower his like body to the ground. And that is a ranged attack, same thing, and then go back to melee. We haven't seen tornadoes yet coincidentally during this particular kill, but Generally, uh, you just want to run away from them. That's literally all it is. They don't last very long and they will spawn here very soon during the second phase. About to hit 50% HP, another major attack, see it coming, switch, easy peasy. Now it gets a little bit more difficult because during the second phase it will also use uh, the electricity attack or the tornado attacks a lot more frequently, bigger chance that it will end up going off compared to that first phase. The first phase is relatively simple still. Things will move a bit quicker and although this is looking to be very easy, the tornadoes are completely random. It's not set on a timer, it can spam the crap out of you. Sometimes it will do four tornadoes in a row, the entire arena is covered. You know, you're just running for a little while, but try to attack in between the running and just practice, practice, practice. The more comfortable you get with the boss, the better it will go, the less you will die and all of that good stuff. Alright, now what's about to hit, happen here is a silly mistake. If you walk under the boss like I just did right there, it will end up stomping you, which is guaranteed to hit through prayer, and it can one-shot you. So you want to make double sure you don't accidentally do that. Literally just avoid clicking close to him. Try either clicking the mini map, which is a bit more difficult, or just click very far away from where the boss is standing so you have more area to move around with to decrease the chance of that happening. Yeah, over here we're about to finish off the kill all with all. It isn't anything too crazy special. It will just take some getting used to and multitasking. Now, I would say the more tricky part is when he spawns tornadoes and you have to start running while dealing with range and mage prayer attacks and going back to melee prayer and all of that stuff, especially if you mess up because then you'll have to eat at the same time. But all with all, I think you guys can do this. Alright, as promised to finish this off, I really hope that guide is enough to help you guys, but I did want to go ahead and try it with melee. Just to see how viable it is, I am once again going to use max gear. You guys could be like, oh, but why aren't you using one of the lesser sets? It doesn't fundamentally matter. The only thing that ma the di only difference it makes is that I might kill it a bit faster in quicker gear, but the mechanics stay the same. It's still the exact same fight, just longer, so I don't think that is going to be too relevant. Uh, with melee though, I would say the bare minimum is having Executioner, because 
Always get executioner guys, I don't know what to tell you, boots and gloves, they're huge, huge, massive. Um, got a fully elixir up for this, because that is what I'm curious about, I want to compare it with my fully elixir ranged kills. Pasta skill is 1 minute 16 seconds I believe, we're gonna use claws as well. You know what, we're gonna use Draco Warhammer as well, because uh, I don't know why, but why not. Gotta lower that defense. Uh, oh yeah, because it's weak to range, so <laughs> we're probably not gonna hit as accurately with melee, realistically speaking. Alright, here we go once again. Gonna record the full kill and just walk you guys through it one more time. No pausing, no anything crazy in between, just to show you guys calm and collectively what to expect here. Once again, gonna start it up with a Draco Warmer spec that's gonna lower that defense to half. I hope that's enough, otherwise I'll have to launch a second spec later. But this should be fine at the very start at least. Drop my spec pad right away so I can get more special attacks up later. Already seeing quite a bit of zeros. Let's see what the claws can do. Ooh, still juicy 400. Into a 125. Claws definitely still capable of hitting at least if you're elixir. So that's a good thing to know. Also alternatively, if you're gonna use melee and you want a special attack weapon. There is a crystal heli in the achievement store with the blessing and crystal gear. I bet it could dish out quite a bit of damage. The only real difference between using melee here is that I have to be more wary of the tornadoes that can potentially spawn because I'll be closer and I have to run in on hunt left to attack him. As you can see he's spamming magic attacks right now but regardless of how many times he does it always switch back to melee prey. Because by the time you notice it's a melee attack it's already hit you. You can't, you don't get like a little delay to prey against. As you can see with this absolutely fine. Now, some of you might be wondering, hey, wasn't there a superior version for this boss? Yes. Technically, I want to say it's the exact same fight, but that's not entirely true. Um, the only added mechanic is that it will do a little rage thing on the enrage phase, like after the first half, where it will spawn blue orbs all over the room, and if it lands on top of you, it will hurt. So, you want to avoid those. That's, that's basically the only difference. Otherwise, mechanic-wise, it is mainly the same, really. So, yeah, I don't know if I need to separately show that. It's just more chaotic, more things happen at once. 1 minute 55, that's honestly not a great kill. I also didn't bring a looting bag, which is also not ideal. Um, but yeah, I mean, it gets the job done. It's definitely doable with melee. I'll do another kill, but this time I'll lower this defense even further, just to see how that does in comparison, I guess. Oh, I'll also give a bonusy tip here. If you have the Ancient Gods or Ornament, you're probably best in slots back weapon, honestly speaking. That shit busted, it's just so strong. Like, as long as it hits, as long as you don't hit a zero, it's gonna do a guaranteed 250 damage. If you're using gear like I am and you happen to have an Ancient Gods or Door, obviously I don't on this account, sadly, then I can imagine that will speed up your kills quite a bit, especially on phase two, because it won't even be affected by the fact that he uh, takes less damage during the second phase doesn't really matter at that point. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that really sums up the kill. This one is honestly not that much faster. Uh, you do definitely want to pray. I'm just gonna let a few hits go through so you can see a little bit of what it can potentially do. But it can definitely uh, dish out some damage right there, 57. That is why you gotta pray, man. Range right there. Just and try to anticipate it, really look closely at the animation. You see shit appearing on the floor, that's magic. You see him ducking down, that's range. More, I don't look at the ducking down, to be fair, I look at whether or not the lightning sparks come off him, and I look at the floor for the magic. That's really all there is to it, there's not that much more to cover when it comes to this boss. It's a relatively simple one, it's not the entire minigame, so... I hope this covers it, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave it down below. And if you uh, eventually do want to see me kill some of the superiors because you're curious how much of a difference it is and such, check out the group Iron Man episodes that are bound to come in the next few uh, days, because they will most certainly include at least one boss fight, but probably a few. So yeah, very cool. That is how you do the hunt, uh, hunt left boss. Yeah, hope you guys enjoy, hope it helps. And melee is definitely not that great, that was quite a slow kill, definitely slower than range. So now you know. Alright, and all with all, I think we're gonna go ahead and round it off here soon. Um, last but not least, as a bonus tip, I would say for Han Lev, focus on doing the right thing over panicking in the heat of the moment. If you're just gonna try and out-eat the damage, you're gonna die because you're not going to. It's gonna deal more damage than you're gonna be capable of out-eating. 
So focus on getting the right prayers and running away. And then when you get back into a comfortable spot, the tornadoes are gone. That's when you want to eat up. That is like a big thing, I would say. Last but not least, one more thing we haven't covered at all is, of course, the drop table. What are you doing this for? Well, there are, of course, quite a lot of things. First and foremost, even the commons are pretty damn nice here, if you ask me, because it also drops bags and uh, bags of riches and tokens. Uh, bolt tips that are useful for wonder tasks, like having to make ruby bolts E, for example. Some cut gems, always nice for like urns and stuff, so you don't have to manually cut them. Same with these logs, wonder tasks, urn items. Sack of riches and tokens, it's 1 in 40, but you see them quite regularly. Then these are the three pieces to make the bow of Fardinen. And then there's the tormented crystal shot. This one can be used to fight the superior version of the boss, which has a separate drop table. The three crystal armor pieces at 1 in 133 each. A crystal two handed axe at 1 in 200. A 10 drop for tormented crystal shots. This is a big one. Uh, 1 in 200, you get 10 of them. They go for over 7 bill each at the moment. They go for a lot of money. I highly recommend if you get this, uh, if you don't want to do the harder version of the boss. Because trust me, this one is an actual challenge. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money, potentially. Blade of Seldor, 1 in 200 as well. And then a Saren Halo, pretty cool item. Useful with Crystal, but mainly if you don't have the set, to be honest. Uh, a Grand Crest, 1 in 200, not bad, not bad, but of course uh, the other 1 in 200 drops are probably going to be more valuable for a while. And then the two Hunleft Pets, which give a 7.5% accuracy and damage bonus to Crystal Weaponry in PvM. So that is really, really nice. And then there's the Torment version that goes just get a Blade of Seldor. Oh my god, okay, well, <laughs> I need to wrap this up, boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, the superior version drops a sack of riches and a sack of tokens regularly. It drops the Crystal of Iowulf, which can upgrade crystal armor pieces. And I'm also pretty sure it can boost the uh, weapon and, well, the, the bow and the blade into a black version, which actually gives a stat increase uh, in comparison to the dyes that are viable in the area. Uh, they just are cosmetic. This one actually gives a bit of a strength bonus and stuff. Then there's the uh, three crossbow or the, the three bow pieces. The limbs make me always think that it's a crossbow, but it's to make the bow. The three armor pieces, one in 20, very common drops. But again, this boss is difficult. Do not be tricked. Uh, and even if you can't kill it comfortably, the shards are very hard to get. Crested one in 20, and then the tormented crystal sigil to upgrade the weaponry. You need three of these at one in 50. And then there's two more pets which have 12.5% accuracy and damage boost. Very good pet if you use crystal and 1 in 500. With that, I think we have everything covered. Again, if you have questions, feel free to let me know. I'll try and read the comments and stay on top of that and answer any that you may have. If I missed anything that you, you know, feel free to point it out. Uh, I'll definitely pin any useful comments and such. And uh, let's go, uh, yeah, move on from here. I'll check you all in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.